So I just saw Tenet and, well, so I'm a straight up Nolan fanboy. If I'm being honest, he's probably my favorite filmmaker. There aren't very many directors that get to play in the humongous sandboxes that he does, and few are awarded the same artistic freedom that he has gained to explore broad and mind-bending concepts such as time, dreams, and space. Love them or hate them, Nolan films are in a category of their own. Huge, bombastic films with a philosophical and analytical brain. There just aren't many movies quite like them. And a large part of Nolan's blockbuster experience is provided by the sound design in his films, which, for the most part, has been pretty excellent. Paired with booming scores often provided by the great Hans Zimmer, Nolan's films create a soundscape that immerses viewers into the tension-filled worlds he creates. The first time I saw Inception, I was forced by the packed crowd to sit directly under a speaker, which might have been the best way to enjoy the movie. The loud crack of gunfire, the roar of the train, Zimmer's pounding rhythms, and of course, the <laughs> It swept me out into a sea of pure tension and created one of the most visceral viewing experiences I have ever had. Last week, I had the chance to re-experience Inception in IMAX, and I found that this has not changed. Without supervising sound editor Richard King and Hans Zimmer's gang-changing the film would not have had the same incredible propulsion that hooks you from start to finish. Sound design is a large part of what made that movie work, and it is a large part of what makes many Nolan movies work. However, in recent years, Nolan and King's sound design has undergone an interesting evolution. I think it started with Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. When the opening scene of The Dark Knight Rises was released as a teaser in front of the IMAX screenings of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, Bane's voice was met with some backlash. Nobody could understand him. His voice behind the mask was a little too garbled, forcing Nolan and crew to remix his voice just before the final release of the film so people could actually, you know, understand the villain of the film. Dr. Powell refused that offer in favor of yours. We had to find out what he told you about us. Dr. Pavel refused our offer in favor of yours. We had to find out what he told you. But even then, a lot of people still had a hard time understanding Bane. But whatever, it worked for the character, right? And it's not like Nolan's next movie is going to feature someone's speech garbled up by some sort of mask or helmet, right? No, 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 no! Mask! Okay, so let's talk about Interstellar. This is another Nolan movie I saw in IMAX, and at that point in time, I'd say it was by and far the loudest movie I had ever seen. Honestly, it still might be. And I was not alone in this assessment. My dad had to cover his ears during multiple scenes, and walking out I heard multiple people say, Man, that movie was really loud. The sound of rockets blasting off made you feel like you were chilling on the landing pad at Cape Canaveral. Which was kind of the point. Nolan got some flack for the sound design of the film, pointing out that oftentimes the dialogue was drowned out by sound effects and music. And according to Nolan, this was purposeful. In his own words, I've always loved films that approach sound in an impressionistic way, and that's an unusual approach for a mainstream blockbuster, but I feel it's the right approach for this experiential film. Many filmmakers I've admired over the years have used sound in bold and adventurous ways, and I don't agree with the idea that you can only achieve clarity through dialogue. Clarity of story, clarity of emotions. I try to achieve that in a very layered way using all of the different things at my disposal picture, and sound. And you know what? I agree with them. It works for this movie. No, you can't make out what our heroes are saying as they're blasting off, but it puts you in their shoes. In the deafening loudness of a rocket where you have to shout to be heard, and even then only barely. The cacophony of the film's sound effects paired with the force of nature that are those Zimmer organs creates an experience akin to a rock concert, where the sheer volume of the sound in front of you overwhelms your senses and takes you on a ride you are unlikely to experience in most films. In no one's own words, it's experiential. There is a massive difference between achieving clarity through emotion and actively making your dialogue indecipherable. You can't even hear what the characters are saying in the quiet scenes. You are being way too nice to Interstellar, Ben. That movie is inaudible. Oh, hey, Jay. Of the underrated YouTube channel Cult Pops, your link is in the description. So, 
What's up? Well, I also couldn't understand half the dialogue in Tenet or any of Nolan's recent films, and I also was going to make a video on it, but I'm hijacking your video because you have more subscribers than me. That's fair. So you think the sound mix problem affects Interstellar more than just the loud scenes? Well, what about when Michael Caine is dying in the hospital? You couldn't get a quieter setting than that, and you can still only barely make out what he's even saying. <laughs> There was no need for him to come back. There was no way to help us. And this is important dialogue! Hell, Bane was important dialogue as well. And in that case, it was also presumably cool dialogue. Bane's voice was so interesting, I wanted to relish every word he said, and as experimental and avant-garde as Nolan's defense of his adventurous and bold sound mix is, I disagree that the trade-off is worth it. I think it's fundamentally bad filmmaking. Me, a not very successful video essayist and even less successful filmmaker thinks that acclaimed director of the generation Christopher Nolan fundamentally misunderstands filmmaking when it comes to sound design. You're not saying that you think that Nolan is a bad filmmaker, are you? No, of course not. I'm a 27-year-old male film buff talking on the internet. I know how to read a room. That's good, because I wouldn't want to imply that Nolan stopped being a good filmmaker after Interstellar. Look, if Nolan made Tenet straight after Interstellar, I'd be like, you know what, this tracks. This is consistent with his downward trajectory, but no. In between these two films, he made a film which not only is arguably his best to date, not only won the Academy Awards for sound mixing and sound editing, but also utilised Nolan's weird affinity for inaudible dialogue to the film's advantage, creating an atmosphere and world where it made sense for the audience to feel lost and panicked. And I'm talking, of course, about about Dunkirk. The only movie that I've seen that rivals Interstellar for sheer volume in IMAX is Dunkirk. I believe Dunkirk cannot be properly enjoyed at home, on normal TV speakers. You need that IMAX surround sound to really make your world shake as a spitfire shrieks into view, dropping bombs over your head. <laughs> The gunfire in the film is incredibly loud, to the point where I actually covered my ears for the first few minutes of the film, and Zimmer's score blurs the line between score and sound mix as it becomes hard to discern where the sounds of the gunfire and airplane engines begin, and the unconventional instrumentation of the soundtrack ends. This film takes Interstellar's experiential sound design to a whole new level. It features very little dialogue, and what little there is is often drowned out by the din of crowds, gunfire, explosions, or garbled through the radio. Seriously, if you thought Tom Hardy's Bane was intelligible, try to decipher this guy. For this leader, one bounded down. On my mark, for this two. Join left. For this two, I have you on my port. I have no eyes on for this leader. Over. It's a sound choice that, honestly, is kind of unpleasant. Everything is very harsh, hard to understand, blaringly loud to the point where your ears feel wrung out and tired by the end of the film. But that kind of fits, right? This is a movie about the unbearable tension of war, the impending doom hanging over the heads of these characters who essentially just serve as audience surrogates without much of a personality of their own. It's less of a traditional movie with a narrative and a plot and more of a, say it with me, experience. Bombing Simulator, the movie. Exactly. In essence, Nolan's bombastic and inaudible sound design complements and enhances the experience of Dunkirk. It's arguably pretty genius. I almost saw it as a response to Interstellar. It's like Nolan saying, oh, you can't understand any of my character's dialogue? Well, here's a film where you don't need to understand any of the dialogue. It was an indication that he was becoming a better filmmaker and a better experimenter. It's visceral, and I'm glad I watched it. But that being said, when Tenet was announced, I was itching for a return to Nolan's older style. Films less interested in putting you through an experience and more focused on complicated narratives with interesting protagonists. And Tenet looked like it was going to be a return to that style, something more akin to Inception or The Dark Knight. And sadly, I'm a little disappointed. 
because here the weaknesses of Christopher Nolan's experiential sound design are on full display. I couldn't follow the plot of Tenet, I couldn't connect with the characters, and I was honestly hopelessly confused by the mechanics of time inversion. But not because the plot was that complex, or because the characters were necessarily badly written, or because I couldn't follow the explanations of how time inversion works, but because I literally could not hear the dialogue in this movie. In Tenet, Nolan effectively drowns out his own dialogue with incredibly loud and busy sound design. And while a similar approach worked in Interstellar and Dunkirk, it very much does not work here. Man, I feel like I'm going insane! The audio mix in this film is like Interstellar, but it's playing in another room and it's raining outside. How in any filmmaking school of thought is not being able to hear what anyone is saying a good thing or an entertaining thing? Maybe it's just because I enjoy iconic lines of dialogue or great performances, but I personally believe that dialogue should be crystal clear unless under very specific creative circumstances. Like we'd already seen in Dunkirk and I'll begrudgingly concede certain parts of Interstellar. The aggressive and harsh audio in Dunkirk and Interstellar helped immerse us into the harsh worlds they created. The austere harshness of space and a dying earth, and the brutal landscape of a battlefield. But this soundscape does not serve a mysterious world of espionage as well. It takes us out of a world of intrigue and places you into a much rougher, dirtier sound space that clashes with the underhanded dealings, negotiations, and expertly choreographed fight scenes taking place on screen. Nolan and Richard King seek to immerse you in the international world of Tenet by blasting the background noise of loud locations. But, like Inception, Tenet's world requires a lot of exposition. Exposition which is constantly drowned out. Drowned out by trains, drowned out by water crashing against a boat, by the din of a restaurant, by another boat, by the noise of an airport, by another boat, or garbled through a radio, or a different radio, or an oxygen mask, or yet another boat. There are so many boats making it so that you cannot hear one word of dialogue in this film. And that is not an exaggeration. I could not make out a good 70 to 80% of the dialogue in this movie. And it didn't make it more experiential, it just made it hard to watch. Oh my god, when the main characters all donned masks and started talking through radio to each other while they were on a boat, I was so close to screaming, Fuck you, Nolan, and storming out of the cinema. What's even the point? Why even have the dialogue there if it's indecipherable? In Dunkirk, there aren't really very many scenes where exposition is told through dialogue, nor scenes fully dedicated to conversations, but Tenet feels like it's maybe 80% conversation scenes. So why insist that dialogue isn't actually important and then stage scenes which are telling the audience to listen up. I'd agree, though Nolan has stated that he believes that audiences really only need to get the gist of what's going on in a scene from the dialogue. Okay, sure, but I have been watching movies my whole life, and myself and almost everyone else are trained to pay attention to dialogue when it's presented the way it is in Tenet. We all understand that if a film is dedicating time to a conversation, and we're watching a shot-reverse shot of those characters talking, then this is pertinent information for us to pick up on. Again, if it isn't pertinent, then don't put it in the movie. Don't frame it like it's need to know if it isn't. But in the case of Tenet, it is kind of need to know. It is! It's a vicious cycle! It's like ringing the lunch bell and then being confused and angry when all the school children turn up expecting you to feed them. Having watched this and Inception back to back, the differences and similarities here are in stark contrast to one another. Both are films set in complex, unfamiliar worlds that rely on copious amounts of exposition for world building. Both explore strange and unique science fiction concepts that are hard to wrap your brain around. And, as I mentioned before, both use bombastic score and sound design to propel the narrative forward. But whereas Inception was a fun brain teaser of a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed puzzling my way through, Tenet wouldn't even give me the pieces to the puzzle, because its dialogue is hidden under layers and layers of noise. I couldn't understand why characters were embarking on missions, what their objectives and motivations were, or how they related to each other. Tenet is the opposite of Inception. Inception is not actually that confusing, but everyone is explaining everything to you, and in Tenet everything is very confusing and no one is explaining Shit. 
Well, maybe they were. I don't know. I couldn't actually hear what anyone was saying. It's hard to connect with characters when they are literally being drowned out. And it's hard to understand a plot this complex when the explanations are inaudible. By all accounts from those who actually did follow the story, the rules of the universe and the exposition dumps aren't actually all that complicated. So why have them there at all? Why? Why is Nolan like this? Why does he insist on doing this in every one of his films? This film is a testament to man's hubris. It is a film as arrogant in its convoluted storytelling as its filmmaker is in releasing it during a pandemic. This is a movie which people are literally dying to watch and you can't even understand what anyone is saying in it. Lord, you're getting worked up. Do you just not like Christopher Nolan? I don't know, man. I don't know, the, the Dark Knight was just such an influential film for me, you know. That movie changed my life. It got me into not only films, but filmmaking and film analysis. It's responsible for so much of who I am today, and I'm just so frustrated that the main thing that prevents me from enjoying a new Christopher Nolan film is this trivial creative choice he could just as easily not make. It's like I'm not allowed into the clubhouse. And that's the thing. Inception is a loud movie. It's mixed in such a way that the music and sound overwhelm the senses, but the dialogue is still crystal clear. I never missed out on one bit of dialogue. And Nolan is right, there's other ways of providing clarity besides the clarity of dialogue. Steven Spielberg uses the great effect in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which features scene after scene of people talking over each other left and right. And Dunkirk features almost no dialogue, and yet it's easy to follow. You don't always have to prioritize dialogue over everything else. But in a film as plot-heavy as Tenet, when that plot relies so heavily on exposition, then you need to take the time to scale it back and let us hear what the characters have to say. Even if you don't want a ton of dialogue carrying the story, we need some quiet moments. When the sound mix is turned up to 11 for the entire runtime, it just wears the audience out. It's all about moderation. I just miss being able to understand Nolan's films, man. Sound design isn't something I have to worry about when I see any other director's films, but with Nolan, it just feels like he's never gonna change. And if I'm being really honest, I really do miss the sound design that Nolan's older films had. Inception, The Dark Knight, The Prestige, Memento, these movies were pleasing to listen to. They got loud and bombastic when they needed to, but they still let us have moments of characterization or just quiet even in the biggest and loudest scenes. I miss when there was a little bit more balance to the sound mix of Christopher Nolan's films. Nolan is a fantastic screenwriter in my opinion, and I want to hear his dialogue. I don't want to be taken out of the movie because I'm wondering why I can't hear everything that needs to be heard. So, Mr. Nolan, if you're watching this, please don't take this as an attack. I love your work. Just, in the future, maybe scale it back a bit, and let us hear some of that beautiful dialogue you spent so much time writing.